Maybe you found yourself free of a narcissist recently, one who was in your life every day and who gaslighted you, manipulated you like there was no tomorrow and who seemed to live to bring you grief. And now that they're gone, you kind of hate to admit it, but there might just be a tiny little part of you that misses that person, despite the fact that they took you for granted, despite the fact that they minimized you and made you feel like you were completely worthless. Does the narcissist think about you after the discard or after you leave them? Short answer, yes but not for reasons you might expect. So let me explain. For the average toxic narcissist, the discard is going to lead to the sort of out of sight, out of mind phenomenon. They don't see you as a whole person, but rather as an extension of themselves. Their perception of relationships isn't the same as yours or mine because they see previous relationships in a similar way to technology. I've often talked about how narcissists think of love like a cell phone. And what I mean is that their perception of relationships isn't exactly like ours. They kind of see it like a smartphone. So when you first get a smartphone, you think it's awesome because it's new and it's shiny and it has all the good features, stuff you haven't seen before. But eventually it kind of slows down and it becomes obsolete. And then a newer, faster, better model comes out and you quickly upgrade. Maybe you miss a feature or two from the old phone, but you don't really dwell on it because the new phone is so much better. It's exactly how narcissists see relationships. You've done your research though, and you recognize that you probably miss the narcissist because of something called a trauma bond, which was the result of the ongoing cycles of your toxic relationship. Narcissists have a way of going to revisit their old flames, but you gotta know, it's not about the old flame. Instead, it's about whatever they can get from that person in the form of narcissistic supply. So if that happens to you, don't confuse this with the idea that they miss you or they feel like something is real going on there. Think of it like this. You're craving ice cream and you hear the ding, ding, ding of the ice cream truck coming down the street. What like you think? I was just craving ice cream. So you go outside, you stand there with your money and you're all excited. But then as the ice cream truck approaches, you don't turn away and go back inside if you see a truck that's different than the truck you originally thought you were going to see right? You're not thinking of the specific truck at all. You're only thinking of the awesome ice cream that you're about to eat. <laughs> so it's what the truck can provide you, not the truck itself. You can and you would get your ice cream from any truck. So does that make sense to you? It's kind of how narcissists see relationships. So we're going to dig in and relate this to the narcissists and their psychology. By nature, narcissists are extreme in their affections. They tend to be as shallow as they are unstable. Now, during the love bombing or idealization phase, they're going to find you highly desirable. And since they're in acquisition mode at the beginning of a relationship, they're really on their best behavior. They're trying to get you hooked. They're trying to win you. So they're not going to bother to look for everything wrong with you just yet. They're going to put you up on a pedestal and they're going to fool both you and themselves in this moment. Now, the truth is that part of the reason we don't notice the red flags during that time is because a lot of the things narcissists are saying, they actually believe at that moment. They really think at least temporarily that they have found Mr. or Ms perfect. But you have to remember too that narcissists lack object constancy. Object constancy is a Freudian concept that essentially means for us that narcissists can't love us and be angry at us in the same moment. So literally when they feel angry at you, they almost hate you. And that means they can only see you as either nearly perfect or totally and completely worthless. See, there's no in between it. They're black and white kind of thinkers. Of course, right about the time they get you fully attached and enmeshed, they're going to start to notice little bitty flaws around you. Nothing big, just enough to help them recognize that, oh my gosh, this is a human and not like a perfect being. Of course, now that they've got you in their clutches, they're going to see you as a sort of object or a trophy, if you will. While this is going to feel super awesome at first, it almost feels too good to be true. You're going to notice pretty quickly that it actually is the idealization or love bombing phase, and it will end painfully and abruptly as the discard phase comes up. This is around the time the narcissist will get bored and their feelings seem to go kind of from fire to ice. They'll suddenly become the most critical person you've ever met. Now it might start subtly at first. You'll get a veiled insult or something. And before you know it, you become the target of pretty horrific psychological abuse. Most narcissists don't have really good relationships. And once they have you, they're almost going to feel like they don't want you anymore. But of course, if they lose you, as you know, they go into hoovering mode a lot of the time. Suddenly they're going to need to be with you again. Nothing will stand in their way. The chase resumes and guess what? They'll pursue you like no other, at least until they have you back, in which case they circle right back around into the devalue of discard phases. Of course, this can feel almost as good as love bombing to you if you are an unsuspecting codependent. But just like always, the other shoe drops, despite how sincerely the narcissist recently professed their love. And no matter how many exciting and detailed future faking plans, they tricked you into believing. As soon as their interest wanes, suddenly they develop a really convenient case of amnesia and they sort of start backing toward the proverbial exit door, as it were, and right out of the relationship. 
This is, as you're already aware, I'm sure, a vicious cycle that continues for months, years, or even decades. But where does it leave you? Devastated is an understatement. You won't understand how someone who was just so passionate and hot for you a minute ago is suddenly freezing you out. But how could they be so cold? Look, here's the simple, awful truth. In this moment, they do not care about you. Yeah, they might try to suck you back in at some point. And yes, the cycle will repeat if you allow it. But the truth is that they're not coming for you. It's the narcissistic supply that you give them. It's not who you are. It's what you can do for them. So is all this your fault? Did you do something wrong here? No, the fact is that you couldn't have done anything to change the situation. Narcissists repeat this cycle in every single one of their relationships in varying iterations. No matter who you are, and you could be and might be the most amazing person on the planet, it doesn't matter. The narcissist does not succeed in relationships at least not long-term healthy ones. Now, don't get me wrong. A lot of times they're going to sit around and suck up your narcissistic supply for years if you let them. I know of decades long relationships like this, but the thing is they're incapable of keeping up that healthy facade for a long time. And this will lead healthier people or people who haven't had their self-esteem destroyed by parents or another toxic relationship in their lives to walk away from the narcissist, which leads the narcissist back to what? a more reliable form of supply. Maybe that's you. Going through these cycles of intermittent reinforcement, which is ongoing punishment and rewards, sprinkled the tiny crumbs of affection here and there to keep you hooked. Well, that's going to cause the trauma bond to make you feel almost like an addict who has gone cold turkey on their drug of choice when the narcissist is no longer in your life. So have you ever found yourself wishing the narcissist would regret losing you or wanting them to miss you once you are gone? See, the narcissist's selfish manipulative behavior has led us to spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to fix our broken relationships. And a lot of times we feel that way even when we're still in these relationships. And even if we recognized that something was just kind of off about it or that we were dealing with a toxic relationship during the relationship, we might have either second guessed ourselves, doubted ourselves or blamed ourselves or some combination of all three. Thanks to the ongoing invalidation and manipulation that we suffered at the hands of the narcissist, we find ourselves trying to figure out exactly what happened and we try to understand why. We want to know how much of it was really our fault and we try to wrap our heads around what we've gone through. We wonder if the narcissist ever loved us and we wonder what the heck is so wrong with us that we would put so much of ourselves into such a toxic abusive person. We doubt that we can move forward alone and sometimes as a result of being told that we'll never be loved again or that we aren't capable of doing so. We think we are worthless and we doubt we deserve to be happy. All of this leads us to struggle with cognitive dissonance, a form of psychological stress or discomfort that happens when you simultaneously hold two or more contradictory beliefs, ideas, or values in your brain. In other words, because we see one thing and we're told another thing or shown another thing by the narcissist during the relationship, and because we try to, or we actually do start believing it, it messes with our heads in some pretty big ways. So how do you begin to overcome overthinking and rumination about the narcissist when they did what they did to you? Well, let's start here. You didn't get closure. You need closure. And as it turns out, that isn't something that most of us get from narcissists. Most narcissists do not offer their victims any sense of closure. Either they leave without a word or they aggressively discard you and refuse to acknowledge any fault at all on their part. Or in some cases, victims find the strength to leave and then the narcissist plays the victim. In fact, in nearly all cases where a narcissist is involved in a relationship that does end, they leave you feeling no closure, feeling confused and spinning. They either do this intentionally or instinctually depending on their intelligence, their level of narcissism or their place on the cluster B spectrum. The higher their intelligence or level of narcissism or the higher up on the spectrum they are, the more likely they are to do this intentionally. That means you need to create your own closure. Now I'm going to share with you an exercise that I think is going to be really helpful for you. I call it the letter exercise. One powerful way that you can get the closure that you need is to write the narcissist a very special kind of letter. Now this exercise actually came to me personally in a very strange way. At the age of around 20 years old, I found myself ruminating about a painful experience I'd had with a person I had previously been involved with. While I was in so many ways finding peace and happiness after ending that relationship, I could not stop thinking about this person and feeling so angry about what he had done to me. 
So one morning while I was having my coffee and again, feeling all kinds of anger, I threw my hands up and I screamed at the ceiling. What do I need to do to get this person out of my head? I realized in that moment that I had continued to allow this person to control me on some level because I couldn't stop being angry. And even though I was no longer in contact with him, he was in my head all the time. It was right about then that I thought I was going nuts because quite honestly, while I was alone in my apartment, at this moment, I literally heard someone whisper in my ear. Not only was I furious at this mysterious voice, I knew for sure didn't come out of my own head because of the craziness that it talked about. I mean, it literally said something absolutely ridiculous. It said, you have to forgive him. I was like, what? Anyway, after calming myself down and getting my head together, I sat down with a pen and a notebook and I started to write a letter. One that would not only help me to create my own closure, but one that would change my life forever and in some very surprising ways. Inadvertently, I ended up creating an exercise I would end up using with my clients over the years. Here's how you can do the same thing. First, get yourself a pen and a notebook. And if you struggle with writing by hand due to some physical issue, then you can always type it on your computer or voice to text it or whatever. But if at all possible, I suggest you write it with a pen or a pen pencil as it seems to have some kind of additional therapeutic value for some reason. Anyway, you're going to write a letter to the narcissist. In this letter, you're going to say all the things you wish you had said to them, but you never did. Or you're going to say the things that you needed them to hear, but they refused to hear. Now be sure when you're doing this to take your time. It might take you a couple days. So if you need to write a little bit at a time and put it away and then come back to it when you're ready or when you have the time to do it. Now put all of your anger, your frustration, your sadness, disappointment about the way they treated you in the relationship and in any other feelings you have about the narcissist in this letter. Put it all in the letter. You can say all the curse words you want. <laughs> yes. And you can also scribble all over the paper if you want to. Whatever you need to do, just put all the feelings that you have, all the thoughts that you have about the relationship in the letter. No thought or feeling is too small to include here. So think like brain dump or soul dump. Just make sure you include any and everything that comes to mind, no matter how petty or unimportant it might seem to you in that moment. Now, when you're finished writing this letter, I want you to let it sit overnight, kind of let it steep like tea or even for a couple of days and then pick it up again and read through it. At this time, you can add anything you want to add. And if you really want to, you can rewrite and edit the letter, which I did when I did mine, but you don't have to do that part. Now, this is when you're going to add the final paragraph to the letter and you're going to want to make it read something like this. And now, though you don't deserve it, I'm forgiving you or releasing you if forgiveness feels too painful right now. Not because you deserve it, but because I no longer want your toxic negative energy in my space. I trust that you'll get exactly what you deserve from here on out. And I release the need to know what happens for you next. Goodbye forever. Now at this point, you have two choices. You can mail the letter or not. Personally, I didn't do it. I didn't need to mail it. And I would not necessarily recommend that you do because in reality, this letter is not for the narcissist. It's for you. It's all about getting the negativity out of your head, out of your life, out of your heart. And it's an ideal way to start creating your own closure. I suggest you burn or shred the letter and get it all out of your life. And as you do, imagine the negative energy and the anger and all the other emotions burning away or being shredded. Some people like to float their letter down the river or clip it to a balloon and let it fly away. Do whatever feels good to you. Heck, you could even just throw it in the trash. But whatever you do, once the letter is written, get it out of your life. Now, this simple exercise provided me with so much relief and so many of my clients have reported the same thing. Have you tried it yet? Will you give it a shot now? Let me know in the comments section below. Now I'm going to attach a portion of a previous video that's going to take this whole thing to the next level for you. But stick with me because I'm going to be right back here afterward to see you. Another tip, you can put a rubber band on your wrist and every time you think about them, snap, snap, snap. And I know it sounds silly, but a lot of people find that to be highly effective. Don't forget, it's okay if you need to take some time to mourn this person. You can cry if you need to cry. You can scream and break and throw things if you need to. Give yourself a little bit of time to do that if necessary. Don't just pretend it didn't happen. Let the emotions out. When you are in a relationship with a narcissist, very often your emotions are cut right off. You're not allowed to experience them or feel them. So try letting them out and then moving forward. That can be incredibly helpful for you. Another thing you can do is simply go around where you live, go around your stuff, your office, your home, and take all pictures and memories of this person out. It can help you to move forward emotionally and mentally. Your visual cues of that person, any smells of that person, anything like that, removing those can help you to sort of let go a little faster. So there are a few things you need to know about narcissist enclosure in addition to what I talked about. This part's going to be a little tough, but it's really important that I explain something to you here. You need to know that someone generally gives you closure at the end of a relationship because they actually care about you and the relationship that you've had 
get together. They give closure because they want peace and they care enough about you to want you to be happy. They want you to be able to move on. The narcissist knows that if you have closure, you're going to be able to find that peace and then you'll be able to move forward without them. And by keeping you in this toxic loop, they keep you open for a Hoover and they are able to keep taking future faking and using you at will. It would require them to take personal responsibility for how they've treated you and it would mean ending the lies and manipulation that they've been using to keep you emotionally engaged in the first place. Just the idea of real genuine closure is nearly unthinkable to a narcissist if you really think about it. There are a lot of different things that you can do though to make your own closure. So the first step to doing that is to sort of try to let go of the illusion of what you thought the relationship was. This is true whether we're talking about a romantic relationship or a family relationship or a friend relationship. We had some idea in our mind who that person was and who they thought we were and now suddenly we're seeing clearly we're awake and we know that it wasn't exactly what we thought it was it's really important for us to let go of that illusion of goodness the illusion of what we thought we had and to sort of be aware be awake and understand what's really happening and what really happened no contact is really an important part of recovery. In fact, it's almost necessary for anyone who is able to do it. Sometimes you're going to have to deal with a narcissist on certain things, like if you have kids or you have a business together. But if that's the case, low contact is your best option and you only deal with them on a business level. No emotions involved. You have to recognize that everything that we thought was real in the relationship was just a lie. It was just an illusion and it's painful. You're going to mourn it like a death. Statistics tell us that things like divorce are more stressful than things like actual death. So be aware of that. When you're able to start letting go of that illusion, you're going to be able to start finding your actual self. You're going to go through a phase where you do a lot of research. You're doing that right now by watching this video. You need to understand the person on a logical level. And I think most intelligent people have that need once they realize what the heck they've been going through. You then have to accept what you can control and what you can't control and recognize there are some things you have power over and some things you don't. What you do have power over is yourself and your own perception and your own world. What you don't have power over is the narcissist. So the best thing that you can do is steer clear, stay up as far away as possible and don't engage unless you're absolutely forced to because you have children or a business together. You won't receive closure from a narcissist, but you can find something in yourself that is beautiful out of all of this mess. This is a big rubble filled mess, this thing that happened. What you can do is start pulling the rocks off the mess and look in there and there will be your beautiful, bright soul. And you can nurture yourself and you can love yourself to the point that you begin to really grow and change. You can create your own closure without being in contact with the narcissist. You can create your own closure and find your own peace. And this is the best part of all of this, the silver lining of this whole darn situation. You can come out being a better, stronger, more evolved person than you ever were before you started this relationship. I'm not saying it's the best way to get to it. I'm just saying if you've already been through it, you might as well take that silver lining and run with it. The bottom line is that narcissists seem to stop thinking about you when they no longer want you. But most narcissists will repeat this cycle over and over again with you. And like I said, everyone else they're involved with in various capacities and various iterations. It's not just you. It is them. In fact, it's not you at all. The only responsibility you have is that you continue to allow it to happen. So let's just review here. Is the narcissist going to come back? Most likely if you let them. Do they miss you when you're gone? Sort of. They miss your supply. They miss what you do for them more than they miss you personally. Should you allow a narcissist to come back into your life? Personally, I say no. I think it's a bad idea. I think the only way to really truly heal and move forward in a healthier way is to go no contact with the narcissist. However, there are certain situations in which you can't go no contact with the narcissist. And in that case, there are things that you can do to make them be nicer to you. But in my opinion, these things are short term solutions, not long term ones. For example, if you never say anything negative to the narcissist ever about them or you never criticize them, you never do anything to cut down their self esteem, that can help. If you agree with everything they say, that can help. If you serve them and do everything they need you to do and you're a really, really good little source of a narcissistic supply, that can help. The truth is though that no one wants to live in a situation like that, at least not for long. Now, sometimes we think, oh, at least it's the wolf I know and not the wolf I don't know. 
Or sometimes we think, I can't afford to leave. I have too much going on. Or we have kids or whatever. And look, I get it. Not everyone can leave. And I'm certainly not implying that you must get up and leave right this minute. But at the same time, I hope that if you're not actively planning to leave, you're at least thinking about ways that you can get yourself safe emotionally. There are some things you can do if you want to leave the narcissist but haven't done it yet, and maybe you need to plan ahead. So if you do wish that you could leave the narcissist but you're not sure how you're gonna do it yet, check out queenbeing.com slash plan, P-L-A-N. All right, now this brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, have you gone no contact with a narcissist and do you believe that they missed you or that they wanted you back? Or do you think that it was just that they missed what you could do for them or your narcissistic supply? And what kinds of antics did you deal with when they did try to come back? Or were you completely ghosted? Have you struggled to stop overthinking about what happened to you in your toxic relationship? If so, were you able to get past it or are you still struggling with it now? Have you tried the letter exercise and how did it work for you? If not, what did work? Share your thoughts, share your ideas, share your experiences in the comment section below and let's talk about it. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. Now, before I go, make sure you take a look at the videos I'm going to leave for you right there and right there. And while you're here, hit that subscribe button right over there so we can stay connected and continue on this healing journey together. I'll see you soon.